We're in the money. We're in the money. We've got a lot of what it takes to get along. We're in the money. The skies are sunny. Old man depression, you are through. You done us wrong. 730-92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com, RTC Channel 4. And on your smartphone device, download the TuneIn Radio app. You can take us anywhere you want to go. With 14 degrees outside the window on 8th Street, which I think Dick Belcher is about as warm as we started this program for some time now. It is. And it's going to get 40 or 42 today. About 42 degrees. Yeah, wow. that'll be nice, won't it? If people Finally. Will be They'll be uh, dancing in the street. Convertible tops will be down. Yeah. Everybody be ready to go. You'll see the shorts out there. You'll see the flip flops. It's yeah. all. It's all going to happen today. Now don't tell these high school kids. That. <laughs> <laughs> doing that later on. Don't give them any ideas. You know they do funny things at Tippy Valley. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa! <laughs> but I'm sure they'll be able to handle the situation okay. So, well. Uh, it's going to be a great weekend. Uh, finally, we're getting some uh, thawing, hopefully. And don't forget to turn your clock forward Sunday. That's right. you got to spring forward. Spring forward. That's right. Seems like we just did that. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. That's because time flies. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like going forward on my clocks better because some of them you can't turn backwards. So, so you got to go around 11 hours or I see. <laughs> no, 13 hours, actually. So. Right. <clears throat> okay. Well, we'll try to figure that out. So. Good time to change your smoke alarm batteries too. Yeah, check your smoke alarm and uh, your carbon monoxide. All that kind of stuff. It's a it's a good little thing to do. Test them, and uh, doesn't hurt to replace them. That's right. So, okay, a little trivia this morning. <clears throat> what is cord waning? The craft of making drinking vessels from leather. The craft of making rope. The craft of making candies. You know, I'll, we got the uh, uh, we have that. the uh, fair going on out at the museum this weekend. And That's right. If you go out there, you can get that information. They have uh, 18 to 20 booths out there. They're using two buildings. It's going to be a great show. Yeah. Started last night. <clears throat> no, I'm talking about the museum. Oh, okay, out the museum. Okay. <laughs> they got I'm the sorry. fair. I'm sorry. But also, uh, of course, they've got the antique uh, out the fair going grounds, on right. out the fairgrounds. Right. So we'll talk a little more about that. Soon, so Rochester Zebras play in the sectional tonight. They play St. Joe. St. Joe and Valley plays Northwood right. tonight. And uh, the Valley people here are all <laughs> fired up to for a big victory tonight. <clears throat> Purdue girls play Iowa today in the in the tournament. Okay. Uh, IU lost to Michigan uh, yesterday. So uh, Purdue's but the only thing we got left is. Ladies basketball, and they're they're pretty good. Okay, good. They beat Nebraska uh, last weekend, and so <coughs> now I see uh, IU boys are going to wear the uniforms of the past. Are they? Yeah. That'll make them better today. Well, yeah, they'll okay. take it a little, let it rub off, and uh, <laughs> make them better in the tournament. Okay. But still, no names on the back. Ah. Are they wearing the Never short have. shorts? What? Are they bringing back the short shorts? <laughs> I, don't I don't know about no, that. No, I don't know about that. I, all I saw was the jersey thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. <laughs> You'll have to look at that. You're not old enough to watch <laughs> <laughs> you know about the short shorts. <laughs> well, back in the Rick Mount days, you know. Oh, yeah. Short shorts. Saved on material. That That's way. right. <laughs> and then they went to those that uh, hung below the knees. Right. Slowed him up. <laughs> him up. <laughs> so we'll see what happens uh, with the uh, the new uniform. See if that inspires them. All right, we'll see. Okay. Uh, just a little trivia here. Uh, Ten years ago, the the ladies' won the state championship. That's right. Remember that? Yeah. Congratulations yeah. to them. Twenty oh four. Yep. Habitat for Humanity's first annual antique and collectible sale is going on this weekend at the Fulton County Fairgrounds. It's open 9 to 6 today and 9 to 4 tomorrow. Admission is 
We talked to Carmen last week. Yeah. Get out there. You can uh, buy some things, maybe sell some things, and uh, do a little trading. Rochester Rotary Club and Junior Achievement serve an all-you-can-eat fish and chicken fry today, 4.30 to 7 at the St. Joe Parish Hall. They do that every year. It's a big fundraiser for them. And uh, the uh, Junior Achievement's a great organization. They spend a lot of time uh, with the kids and in the school room. You can eat fish tomorrow. You can get fish tonight, and then tomorrow you can go to Albanovi. Township Fire Department, they have their annual fish and chicken fry from 4 to 7.30 at the Township Community Building. Well, fish is brain food, so all you have to do is start going to those fish fries and it'll make you smarter. Well, Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll for, for example, the 2014 National Invitation Tournament is a single elimination tournament of 32 NCAA Division I teams that were not selected to participate in the NCAA Tournament. Annual tournament starts on campus sites and ends at Madison Square Garden. Tournament begins on Tuesday, March 18th and ends on Thursday, April 3rd. Thank you, Baron. Got it right here. There you have okay, it. Okay, it is in the spring. Right. And uh, for, uh, for those that uh, couldn't quite make it, and probably IU might be in there. Yeah, might. We'll see well that, how that goes. Rochester Rotary Trivia Contest is uh, 6 p.m. April the 9th at the First Christian Church. This contest has four rounds with one question from 10 categories per round. There's time restrictions for each question. First place winners receive $150. Second gets $75. Entries are due by April 2nd. $50 entry fee. Good tournament. First Federal has the team. Oh, good. Yeah. You want to know what the name is? What's the name? Dollar and Cents. <laughs> that makes sense. Not spelled C-E-N-T-S. Oh, okay. <laughs> spelled the other way, right? Took our marketing department about <laughs> three days to come up with that. Well, we got several volunteers. They end it every year. They have a big time, and I uh, would encourage uh, teams to get sure. together and go down there and have some fun uh, on uh, April 9th at the First Christian Church. The Living History Fair, F-A-I-R-E, okay. will be 9 to 5 tomorrow and 9 to 3 Sunday at the Fulton County Museum. It's the sixth year for the Fulton County Historical Society Indoor Rendezvous. Mission is $1, concessions are available, and uh, you can get breakfast out there tomorrow morning for $7, uh, breakfast buffet, and uh, I'm sure they'll have a nice spread. Daily programs uh, will include history of various time periods and reenactment groups. Excellent. And right along that line, talking about the farm, uh, the uh, museum, Farmer's Market will open up there next Saturday. So that's another sign of spring. It is indeed. That's right. We've got the sectional coming up right. and uh, the Farmer's Market's moved and it's going to be 40 degree, degrees today. What more could we ask? That's a good for? thing. Yeah. Okay. How about some flowers this morning? Kroger donated $275 to the Fulton County Habitat for Humanity. The money was from the Christmas tree sales. We need to give some more flowers. We've talked about this before, but the city and county crews in snow removal. Did a great job, didn't they? They've just they done really a great did. job, and it's been a tough, tough job. Yeah. It's so cold, and, and uh, they, especially here in town, they the streets cleaned up and otherwise uh, you'd have a lot of trouble getting well around. Done, right. So our uh, flowers to them. Dow closed up 61 yesterday, closed at 16,360. Keeps showing strength. It does. Uh, Monday it was way off because of the uh, Kiev situation. Right, in Ukraine. And uh, we can blame that on to President Putin. <laughs> Right? He's uh, he's quite an operator. <laughs> I'm not sure why we, we, United States of America, want to get so involved. <laughs> Kerry goes over there, he's got a billion dollars in his pocket. Yes, he does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the European Union is going to put up 15 billion, aren't they? Are they? I think so. However, don't count Putin out yet. Yeah. 
That's interesting. Kiev, you know what they're famous for? No. Chicken Kiev. Ah, is that right? Yeah. Is that where they came from? Yeah. Okay. You didn't know that? No, I didn't. It's good to know. I've been there. I know that. <laughs> good. Is it a nice city? Yeah, very nice. Okay. Yeah, except when they're having riots. <laughs> no. That lowers them in the travel yeah. guide, right? Yeah. <laughs> Minimum wage. You know, a lot of controversy about that. The president wants to raise it to ten, ten, ten dollars and ten cents. If you do seven. business with the federal government, I think you have to have that as a minimum. And it's seven dollars and twenty-five cents. Right. Uh, I've got an answer. You do? Yeah. Okay. Split the difference between seven twenty-five and ten, ten, and then and set it at that. Okay. And then index it like they do Social Security. Okay. Sure. So every five years or ten years, we don't have to go through this. Oh, it needs to be raised. It's too. That's low. an excellent idea. Should I send it to Yeah, the, I think you should, yeah. absolutely. I'll email it yeah. to somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe uh, Senator Donnelly. Send it to Senator Donnelly, right. Yeah. Well, the word out is nothing's going to happen there that on the, on the uh, minimum wage. So it's an election year. Right, it is. So don't do anything. <laughs> Sit on your hands. <laughs> right, until after November. And collect money for your campaign. <laughs> right. So... Okay, well, we'll get off our soapbox on that. Okay, because we got to get to we these, got, that's right. we're <laughs> these, these guys young guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got two young guys, and then we got another one here, Mr. Boggs, <laughs> right? Yeah, you can, you can say it, old guy. <laughs> Man, that's a loud shirt and a tie. Yeah. Make sure you get that, Scott. That uh, you can see that they can, people out there can see. You. What the Tippy Valley Superintendent of Schools looks like on a Friday morning. <laughs> well, at First Federal, we're open today from 8.30 to 5, and tomorrow 8.30 noon. You also stop by our ATM. Uh, lots of things happening in the mortgage loan business. Uh, for the rates staying flat, and uh, with spring coming, uh, a lot of construction loans are being considered or being made, and that's, uh, that's a good sign that... Uh, the economy is getting a little better. People are thinking about moving, thinking about building, building on, and, and there's a lot, still a lot of people out there that ought to consider refinancing. The yeah, rates are still pretty low, aren't they? Oh yeah, ridiculously low. And uh, you know, the Fed, the Fed last week made the comment that they probably stopped, would taper off on buying bonds right. and. Well, they've said that before, and interest rates went down instead of up. I'm not sure why that was. So, Borrowers must meet underwriting guidelines, and a delivery fee will be applicable to the loan where FDIC, to the loan where FDIC insured and an equal housing lender. And our Magic Squirrel Club number is, in, is uh, 3 9 or 9 or 9 or 27. You got that memorized. I do. Mm -hmm. All right, well, <clears throat> if the Fed's ever come to you and ask now, does Belcher put the number Got it covered. You tell them. We do. We do. Under federal penalties. See, it's, <laughs> it's like the tag on pillows, you know, do not renew <laughs> right. under penalty of law. When I was a little kid, I challenged that. And, <laughs> what do you mean penalty of law? I want to take that tag off my pillow. <laughs> Do they still put that on? Uh, I think so. Do they? I think so. Mattresses and stuff right. like that. Oh, do not remove those tax boys. <laughs> <laughs> you you may end up in jail. You're, that's a federal expense. A offense. So, well, enough the uh, fun with the. We got Brett Boggs with us today. He's the uh, superintendent of Tippy Valley School, and also students Michael Faker and Deonde. Smith, did I get that right? Uh, yeah. Close? Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> For government work, it's close enough? Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, boys. Uh, tell us, uh, why don't you start out, Michael, and, and tell us the project that you've got going on there. Um, so the project that me and Deontay have been working on is Rachel's Challenge. It's a community outreach program that we are trying to bring to our school because we, uh, last year, Valley and Aslana and 
along with us, the Rochester area suffered some great losses, and uh, we were trying to get them there. That way we can help make changes not only in our community, but in our schools and in our households, and we're just trying to make the biggest change we can make. Okay, uh, now wh why did you, you two get involved in this? Uh, Deontay, uh, you, you got an interest in this? And um, last year, uh, one of our students died and he was a really close friend of mine and uh, I think it affected me a lot it really helped me change my life around so from that point on I just wanted to help people I want to help my community I want to help my school and I just want to do the most I can and give back to my peers okay tell us a little more about this Rachel program how, how do you see it working uh, within the schools and the community well, the, their mission statement was, um, you know, bring a chain reaction of kindness s to spread throughout the schools and the community. So I think when we bring this program to our school and to our community that it'll help um, maybe, uh, I don't know how to like say it, uh, I think it'll just help people heal more like from what happened last year and uh, help people deal with bullying and teen suicide and school violence well uh, certainly is a vigorous program and uh, Michael tell us about or say you got to have money yes sir and uh, what, what's your budget and how much do you have and what are we looking at well we were when we first started they told us that we need about four thousand and uh, so far we're at uh, I believe 2300 now so we you know we're halfway there but uh, the more we get even after we reach that 4,000, uh, we can spread that out to the elementary schools and the mentor, I mean, yeah, the elementary schools and the middle schools, and they have uh, different age appropriate levels of uh, presentations to give to the student bodies there. Okay, Brett, uh, tell us about the, how you vision this being a great asset to your school system. Yeah, I'd heard about Rachel's challenge um, a few years ago, and, and it's actually uh, Rachel, what, what's her last name, guys? Scott. Scott. She was the first uh, young lady killed at Columbine several years ago, and I believe there are some ties with the Rochester community um, that is. that young lady has. Yeah, there's a, a, a couple here whose granddaughter was killed. Okay, okay. Um, these young men came to me, it's probably been a little over a month ago, and uh, explained to me what they were trying to accomplish and uh, asked for my support and I told them I wholeheartedly would support that effort. I think it's perfect timing for us in that we did go through a lot last year at Tippecanoe Valley, um, whether it be suicide, deaths of students, uh, the community went through a great deal and it's, uh, it's affected us in a, in a big way and it, as you can hear it's affected these guys too. So I think the effort that they have in place is is a good thing and uh, I think it would help in a lot a lot of ways so I want to support that I've um, we have a task force a mental health task force that they came and talked to uh, we had received a five hundred dollar gift from the family of a young man that took his life last year they wanted that to be used in a way that would help prevent things like that from happening again we've given that money to these guys for this this program uh, we have uh, a person from our community named R Rosie Jansma who sits on the board of directors for the K-21 Foundation and they give her $1,000 each year to gift to a not-for-profit. In the past she has given that to our Boomerang Backpack program. Uh, this year we decided or she decided to go ahead and give that again to this effort to bring Rachel's challenge to Dippity Valley. So uh, I know these guys are working hard. They're, they've got a meeting plan for next week they're inviting area businesses to come in and learn more about it. Uh, they're making phone calls. They're doing a lot of things. And I just really admire them. I admire their initiative. I admire their passion. And I want to do everything that I can do to support their effort to bring Rachel's Challenge to Valley. People out there that may be interested in donating, how do they do that, Brett? You know, they could uh, probably the best way to do that would be to contact Katie Duran. Katie is uh, our JAG specialist. JAG is Jobs for America's Graduates. Uh, she can be reached at the high school. Uh, they can also contact me and I can make sure and get them in contact with and, the correct people. they should make the checks out to? Tippecanoe Valley High School. Tippecanoe Valley High School, okay. All right, now, boys, uh, 
you, you went, you're going to have some meetings next week, right? Yes, and sir. Invite some businesses in and tell us about uh, when that is and where and your expectations. Um, well, the meeting is uh, March 13th, and that would be at 6.30 to roughly 7.30. And uh, we are hoping to have a really good turnout. Uh, what? <laughs> It's in room 140. Yeah, yeah, that's what I forgot. <laughs> that's what I forgot. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're speaking this morning to Brett Boggs, who's uh, superintendent of schools at Tippy Valley, and also students uh, Michael Thacker and Deontay Smith. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing better, right? Yeah, you got it right that oh, time. Good. <laughs> yeah. okay. All right. Now, t tell us a little bit about you get you get the money and kind of your time schedule what you're looking at and what are you going to present uh, to the high school students um what, are you asking what we're going to present or what they're going to present both um well <laughs> right now we're in the stage that me and michael are like raising money and we're presenting to businesses and stuff and then once we get enough money the Rachel's challenge, like the, their group will come in, they'll present to the school and they'll have a community event and then they'll train a uh, hundred students and staff afterwards. Okay. <laughs> Anything you want to add to that, Michael? Uh, no, <laughs> he, he, covered it, he covered it pretty well, right. actually. Well, I think the key to this, uh, one of the keys is the training of students so that when these people come and they make a presentation to our students, I've, I've been told it's pretty impressive, but those folks will leave. What happens after they're gone? The training that will be done with our, our students is, is what will happen when it's gone. Um, you know, we're looking not for just a one-shot deal here, but we want something that's gonna carry on throughout uh, a period of years. And uh, I think from what, uh, what I've found online, what I've learned and what these guys have told me, that that's, uh, that's the way it'll work. Okay, now, Brett, while, while we have you here, uh, it, tell us uh, some of the things, uh, important things that are happening in Tippy Valley, and <laughs> how are you making up this, the uh, snow days? We um, actually have, uh, we've missed 10 days this year. We have two extra days built into our calendar that we didn't have to make up. We had two waived by the state, so we had six to make up. We made one up on President's Day. We're making another one up on March the 21st. We're making another one up the, the day after the last day of school. And then the other two days, um, we're make, in the midst of making them up right now, we've extended the school day by an hour, and we're doing that for 12 consecutive days. That makes up two additional days. So I think uh, we, we surveyed our students, we surveyed our parents, we surveyed our staff, and had three different options. We got their feedback and we've based that decision on this, uh, or, or the model that we're using right now. Our, our teachers really felt they needed to gain some of that uh, instructional time back that they had lost. And they wanted to get that done before we start I-STEP testing, I-READ, uh, end of course assessments in high schools, in our high school, all of the high stakes stuff that uh, testing that we do. Okay, you mentioned I-STEP, to comment on that, Test. Well, have we got the uh, computer system fixed this year? <laughs> you know, we ran a the state ran a statewide test here a few weeks ago, and uh, my understanding was things worked pretty well. But uh, we really won't know for sure until we get into the middle of it. Hopefully, uh, last year's fiasco is behind us, and uh, the state is more prepared uh, to do the online testing than they were a year ago. Well, that glitch that you had last year, how do you affect that? that uh, how do you feel that affected? Uh, Tippy Valley school system? Well, I think it affected everybody. Um, you know, anytime a student is at a computer and they're trying to complete a test online and the thing shuts down and it has to be restarted and it shuts down again or we have to cancel and reschedule, those are all things that I think affect student performance on a test. Uh, the state brought someone in from the outside, paid them a lot of money to say that they didn't think it uh, had much of an impact on kids. But I think if you talk to educators, they will tell you that uh, they believe otherwise. Well, hopefully that won't happen again. We certainly hope not. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> well, we were speaking this morning to Brett Boggs, the superintendent of schools, and uh, two students, 
that are interested in the Rachel Challenge, and that's a great project. Michael Thatcher, Thacker, and <laughs> Deontay Smith uh, <coughs> will. Uh, Again, if people out there are interested in contributing that, you can make a check out to Tippy Valley School and uh, send it there to help uh, with uh, support this financially. And you said any additional things you'll mm -hmm. spill over into the uh, elementary school, right? Yes. Sir. This is obviously a nationwide thing, Rich's Challenge. Mm -hmm. How'd you guys learn about it? Um, a couple of our teachers and a couple of student council members went to a well, a state convention. Yeah, a state convention. And they had the Rachel Challenge people presenting there, and they said they came back and they said it was a really powerful thing, and everybody was crying in the room, and there were big people crying, right. and th they said it was just really powerful, and it, it seemed like something they wanted to bring here. It's obviously been very successful in the other schools that have tried it, right? Yeah. Yeah. From what we've heard. Okay. <laughs> Okay, cool. Also, um, Mr. Belcher, if um, there are any groups in the community that would like for these guys to come talk about Rachel's Challenge, I'm sure they would be glad to do that. Yes, sir. Okay. Anytime. Yeah. Thank you guys for stopping by this morning. Congratulations on uh, working on this project. It's uh, a real challenge, and uh, it would be easy for you guys to do nothing. And uh, But uh, obviously, uh, you're very interested in this project and, and that's great well our trivia this morning was the craft uh, what is cord waning the, is it the craft of making drinking vessels from leather the craft of making rope the craft of making candles I don't know what is it for one what, okay it's, what? First, it's the first one that's what mr. box says. I read the Rochester Sentinel I oh, saw that <laughs> Drinking vessels from leather, and you can go out to the museum today, okay. uh, tomorrow, and I'm sure you can see that. So, so uh, now you know. Let's close with this statement from Rachel Joy Scott. Okay. People will never know how far a little kindness can go, or we can state about this. If you want to get your uh, fellow students concerned or surprised to a random act of, con of kindness today. <laughs> well said, Dick Belcher, thank you very much. Gentlemen from Tippecanoe Valley, thanks very much for being here on the first federal program. Thank you. Thank you.